All right, so we're going to get started. Let's go ahead. Make sure this is sharing on Facebook Live and we'll begin. All right, let's see. Alicia, good morning. Are you able to open us up this morning in prayer? Good morning, yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for just waking us up to see another day, Lord God. Father God, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins, Lord God. And Lord, we pray, dear God, that you would just help us to just stay focused lord god lord we thank you for just this opportunity to log in lord god and just commune with other believers lord god and just to start our day with you lord we thank you for life and life more abundantly through jesus father god lord we pray dear god that you would bless the woman of god lord god that you would just use her, Lord God, as you have been using her, Lord God. Bless her and her family, Lord God. Lord, we pray that your message that will be delivered today would be one of encouragement unto our spirits, Lord God. And because, Lord, your word brings life. So we know that it will bring forth encouragement. Father God, Lord, we pray that many souls will be saved today, Lord God. Because it's all for your glory and your glory alone. And Lord, we ask that you would cover this broadcast, Lord God, cover our internet services. And Lord, we ask that you would also cover our families. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 I touch and agree with that prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise your holy name for what you're getting ready to do. Father God, in advance, Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba, for what you're doing. I'm excited to hear what the Holy Spirit will show us um, today, Father God. So we're just going to worship in spirit and in truth and get in the word. Father God, just prepare us, prepare our hearts, our minds to receive, Father God, so that we can go out and pour out what you've given to us, Lord. Well, Father God, let our cups overflow with all of you in the name of Jesus I pray, Father God, that your anointing would just overtake us. I pray for your glory, the weight of your glory to rest upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, yesterday we had choir rehearsal, but now we can sing it for real. Come on, help us. <laughs> Thank you, Father God. We love you so much. Hallelujah. You are everything, Father God. You are our comforter, Father God. We thank you that you are our victory, Father God. You give us the victory. We always triumph in Christ Jesus. Because of you, it's all about you. And so right now, we decrease so that you can increase, Abba, in the name of Jesus. And so our prescripture for the day, let's go ahead and move this out the way so we can get started. So it's Ephesians 1. In verse 18. And so it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart, which is the eyes of your understanding, your mind, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people. So I pray that the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened so that you can understand what God is showing you, who you are in God, who God is, okay? So the question today is, can you see? Are you seeing the way that God will have you to see? So last week we talked about David. You know, David understood some things. David saw some things and he was able to go and confront that giant, okay? He, was, he had no fear of slaying Goliath. And so that's because 
his understanding okay was was opened up his eye the eyes of his mind the eyes of his understanding had been enlightened okay and so that's what the lord wants to make sure that you have every single day make sure you can see make sure you're able to see the way that god would have you to see okay so let's continue the strongholds will always prevent you from seeing so we have to every day deal with the strongholds tear them down the deceptions the lies you have to always have ask god to clear your mind okay make sure that you have the mind of christ make sure you have the right spirit make sure that you are hearing from the lord okay and so destroy the strongholds every single day and this is how you're going to be able to do it you're going to go through the lesson and you're going to see so before we even go into the different scriptures to show you the importance of seeing clearly I'm going to show um, these videos, okay? Some of us need eye surgery, spiritually speaking, all right? So it's not enough to just look at something and you see, you know, a tree. If God is showing you a tree, okay? Lord, next question is, why am I seeing this tree? What should I learn from looking at this tree? So with the Lord, it's not just you just looking at something. And so many people have eyes and they're looking at stuff but they're not perceiving. So we have to make sure that we are perceiving. So let's watch this quick video. And this one, is maybe, maybe we'll see the second one. We'll see how the Holy Spirit goes. Your eyes allow you to see the world around you, but have you ever wondered how they work? First, it's important to know that vision depends on your brain as much as on your eyes. Your eye's main job is to detect patterns of light. Then they work with your brain to turn those patterns into images. Let's take a closer look. Light rays bounce off an object you are looking at. Let's say the object is a dog. The light reflects off the dog to your eye. Then the light enters through the outer part of your eye called the cornea. The cornea is clear like a window. It helps your eye focus the light to make things look sharp and clear. Next, the light rays pass through an opening called the pupil. The pupil is the dark round circle in the colored part of your eye. The colored part is called the iris. It controls how wide the pupil is and how much light can pass into your eye. In bright light, the iris narrows the pupil, reducing the amount of light that enters the eye. In dim light, the iris widens the pupil to let in more light. All of this happens automatically. Behind the iris is the lens of the eye. It helps focus the light coming into your eye so you can see things clearly. The lens flattens so you can see things that are far away and bends so you can see things up close. When the lens, cornea, and pupil are all working together properly, they will focus light on the back of the eye. That's important because lining the back of the eye is the retina. There are about 130 million tiny cells in the retina that are sensitive to light. When these cells detect light, they turn it into electrical signals. Those signals eventually make their way through the optic nerve, which is like a cable connecting the retina to the brain. The retina helps create a rough image, but it sees the world upside down. It's your brain that turns what you see right side up. Also, when you look at an object, each eye gets a slightly different view of the world. The brain combines those views and makes them into one picture. The brain also adds a lot of details to your vision so that you can see complex shapes, movement, depth, and a rainbow of colors. And of course, the brain connects your sense of sight to things you already know so that when you see a dog, you recognize it as a dog and not a cat or a monkey. And that's how you're able to see. To learn more about how your eyes work, visit nei.nih. Okay, so based on what you just saw, you see that when we see things, it's a whole process, right? And you've seen it spiritually. So it's not just, okay, I look at something and then that's it. You see, you see how the, it goes into your eye, passes the, the cornea and you know, the iris and pupil, all of that is participating in the information that the eye is looking at, whatever the eye is looking at, has to go into your brain. Stuff is upside down, has to be turned right side up. And so it is with your relationship with the Lord, right? And stuff doesn't always make sense like right there and then. So it's it's very important for you to make sure that you are in God's presence, in the word, trying to get clarity, trying to make sure that what you're seeing, okay, is, is being processed correctly, okay, with your mind of Christ, not your own understanding, but your, the mind of Christ so that you can catch the revelation, all right? So it's all about catching the revelation. What is it that the Lord is trying to show you? And sometimes it takes weeks to, to, to get the full picture, sometimes months, because the Lord is so big, right? His ways, his thoughts are bigger than ours. So he gives stuff, gives stuff to um, show us things in chunks. 
like little pieces so that we can grasp it one step at a time. And it's all coming together like a whole puzzle, like a whole sentence. So he might give you one letter at a time to get the words, right? And then you get the words and then he put it in the sentence and put the punctuation marks. So it is, okay? The video, that's the, what the video is showing you, but that's how it is spiritually, okay? So let's continue. Let's continue. See that it's a process for us to be able to see and to understand. Let's get this out the way. All right, so make sure you have God's eyes to clearly see. So I was looking about the eagle. The eagle is amazing, right? So the eagles can see like, far right they have keen eyesight and i saw that it says if it says an eagle can see okay from like a 10-story building they're able to look down and see an ant on the sidewalk and that's how we have to be spiritually we have to be able to see far and, and see see things that other, other people are not seeing god is trying to show you imagine being at the the, the 10-story building right the eagle is all the way up there and looking down, their eyes are so sharp that they can zoom in and see a tiny end on the sidewalk. That's how we want to be spiritually. You want to make sure that your eyes can see. And so this morning, as I was getting ready to get up, we heard boom in the window, right? And because of experience, I knew what it was, right? So I'm laying there and I'm like, okay, the Lord is, the Lord is giving me the, giving me the confirmation as to what he wants me to say. Boom. We heard in the, in the window, we didn't jump up and act crazy, act crazy or anything like that. Cause I knew what it was. And my husband knew what it was too. And within that hour, we heard another boom in the window. And I was like, yep, that's confirmation twice. What was it? So about back in December 15th, 2019, I was in the living room. And there was a morning dove, the, and we had the big, way, the bay windows, big. The bird flew into the window, like, boom. And I, that was my first time of experience. And I'm like, what is that? And so I rushed over to the window and there was the bird laid out on the ground, just limp, okay? And so why did, how did that happen? And then this morning, back to back, right? Twice, the same thing happened. We didn't see the bird, but I knew it was the, the bird like crashing into the window. So how did that, how does that happen? The bird thought that because it's see-through, right? The bird didn't understand that there's a whole glass there and it's thinking it's, it, it was a regular, you know, regular open space, but there was a window there. And how many of us, right? We have been smashing against windows. We thought that it was an opportunity. We thought that it was the Lord, whatever, right? It looked like it was a blessing. And it's like, boom, and you're falling out. That's why it's very important to have the eyes of the Lord so that you can see this and, and perceive that's a window. There's a window right there. Otherwise, you're flying and you think you're making progress. You think you got the truth? You think you got the revelation? And the enemy and your flesh is setting you up and you've been smacking and smashing into windows on repeat. That's because your eyes are not perceiving. You're not seeing clearly, but God is getting ready to make sure that we can see, all right? So make sure you have the eyes of God and make sure you're able to see clearly. And that was this morning. And for the Lord to allow it to happen back to back twice, that's, that's what he's trying to show us. Make sure that you have insight make sure you have clarity make sure you have the truth make sure you have wisdom okay all right let's continue so that was my confirmation this morning all right so let's talk about hagar all right so there's a story in the bible i, I mentioned this a lot because to me it's so amazing it's intriguing to me so in genesis 21 okay when you read this story there is a mother her name is hagar and she has her son, Ishmael. And so she had no, she was in the wilderness or whatever, right? There was no more water. And so she said to herself, you know what? Let me put my son under the bush, right? Because I can't watch him die. I can't watch him die. It says when the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. And then she went off and sat down about a bow, a bow shot away. So she walked off a little bit. 
because she was thinking, I cannot watch the boy die. She they had no water. And she didn't want to see her child die of just like, you know, dehydration or whatever. And as she sat there, she began to sob. She's crying and she's like, my son, you don't have anything to drink and going through it emotionally, right? Imagine as a mother, you cannot provide for your child and you, you're nervous and all the fear is overtaking you. And so she's crying and sobbing. And the Bible says, then God, in verse 19, God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water that was right there all along. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. That's why you see, it's very important for us to have our eyes open you're over here getting ready to die. We're going to die. You pronounce, you listen, you're like, death is the end. But this, this is it. We're going to die. When there was water already there. And so you have to be so careful. Be careful. Sometimes your blessings is already there, but you just can't see because you're focusing on the wrong things. Maybe the, the enemy has scales, scales on your eyes, whatever it is that cause blindness. It could be sin. It could be distraction. It could be the negativity, whatever. But she said they were going to die because they had no water. And when God opened up her eyes, she said, whoa, there was water there all along. How many of us can relate to that? You thought it, that was it. Okay, it's over. Lean into your own understanding, seeing things through your own eyes, right? And, and coming to a conclusion that's wrong. Same thing with the birds, flapping, 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 boom. She was getting ready to give up. God opened up her eyes and her blessing was already there. And this happened with Paul too, right? We can all understand. Paul had scales on his eyes too. So the scales must come off of your eyes so that you can see. And so you gotta ask yourself, Lord, what is it that I don't know? What is it that I'm not seeing? And he's getting ready to open up your eyes to show you the truth, man. Let's continue, so that's first story. This is another story, okay? Of how God is so into eyes. Even when you read the Bible, the creatures in heaven, they have eyes all over them. As I always know, like God loves eyes eyes on all the creatures again there's a lot of scriptures about God's eyes being on the righteous and so we're made in the image of God God want to make sure that your eyes are open too okay he doesn't want you to be blind spiritually speaking right and so there's another story in second king 6 15 and so it says when there was there was the, the army coming okay there's an army coming and and Elisha's servant you know he saw the army it's like a lot of people a lot of soldiers and when the servant of the man of God got up and he went, up, it says, went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Okay, big army. He said, oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? Panicking, right? He see a whole bunch of soldiers and they're surrounding the city. And the prophet Elisha said, don't be afraid. I know you see, right? A whole bunch of soldiers surrounding the city and it looked like we're done. It looked like it's over for us, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what you're seeing. Why? He says, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. See the understanding? So if you're, if you're leaning to your own understanding, if you're, if you're in your own flesh, you're thinking we're done. There's an army. We're surrounded. We're going to be killed, right? But as a child of God, you're going to have to be able to look at certain things in the, in the natural and perceive it now in the spiritual, right? So same thing with David last week. David saw the giant, just like everybody else. He heard the giant Goliath talking smack or whatever, just, just, just being disgusting and, you know, talking all kind of negativity, whatever. David heard and saw things just like everybody else in the natural. But because God had, had been training him spiritually, he was like, wait a minute. My God is bigger than this giant. And God has been preparing me for this moment because I've been fighting the bears and the lions off of the sheep. And so he perceived, he was able to get God's view on things. And he said, the same God who was with me with the lion and the bear will be with me with this giant. I'm gonna kill this giant. And so you have to be able to look at things in the natural 
and see what God is trying to show you. And, and, and not only that, know who God is and God, know what God has already shown you through your experiences so that you're able to, to respond the right way. So when God has been taking you through different things all your life, right? And, and you see certain things, you're like, wait a minute. You see how in the video it says the brain begin to put one and two together to, to, to get clarity. You got to look at things. Okay, wait a minute. God helped me back then. God helped me over there. God helped me over there. God has been doing this. God has been doing that. Okay, the same God who helped me all those different times. I know I'm looking at an army right now, but God can defeat this army. And that's what we need to be doing as the body of Christ. You don't look at things the way it is and just say, okay, oh, there's an army surrounding me. I'm going to die. No. No, the same God who parted the Red Sea. So Elisha knew some things. Elisha was like, we know about God. He's the same God that caused manna to rain down from the heavens to feed the people. He's the, the same God that parted the, the Red Sea. The, the same God that caused the, the Jordan water to back up. The same God that made Sarah have a baby at 90 and Abraham was 100. Oh, don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? God has been training you for this day. And he said, those who are with us right, are more than those who are with them. And that's how you're going to perceive this thing. You're going to perceive it the right way so you can get your victory. Amen. And so the Bible says in verse 17, this is very important. And Elisha prayed. See, prayer is very important. Elisha prayed and he said, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Isn't that something? You're walking around and you're, you're looking at things, but you can't even see. We talk about spiritually. Open his eyes. For those who are praying for your prodigals, praying for your children and praying, you have to make sure you ask God to open up their eyes. Because unless the Lord open up your eyes, you're going to be like the birds flying into glass, flying into windows. You have eyes, but you cannot see. You have eyes, but you cannot perceive. Get your notebook out, right? Get your fasting life together so that you can sit down with the Lord. And Lord, I'm, I'm seeing a tree. But Lord, what do you want me to learn from the tree? Lord, why are you showing me the tree? So that the Lord can give you understanding and clarity. So Elisha prayed. So make sure you're praying for yourself and other people for God to open up their eyes. And so it says, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. And the Bible said, then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked. Isn't that something? Just like that. In, in that same moment. Oh, I see a big army surrounding the city. Lord opened up his eyes. Boom, his eyes opened up. And he's like, whoo, eyes wide open. And he, when he looked again, he saw the hills were full of horses and chariots and fire all around Elisha. Just like that. And so you can see now that the spiritual realm is the real realm, right? And so there's a, a, a whole spiritual realm there that if your eyes are not open, you can't see it. It happened all in that moment. He saw in the natural, a whole bunch of soldiers. He saw a vast army. And when his eyes, when the prophet prayed for his eyes to open, just like that, he saw the other world and that there were more of, of God's angels with them. Amen. All right. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to pray. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked again and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And it says, as the, as the enemy came down toward him, Elisha now prayed to the Lord and he said, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. So isn't that something that the servant started out being spiritually blinded, right? Was spiritually blind and the prophet prayed and then the enemy became blind. See, prayer is powerful. And when you're walking with the Lord, you understand that you can do exceedingly, you can do great things exceedingly and abundantly, right? In the Lord. So, all right, next story. So that was Elisha and his servant. Let's talk about Lydia, the importance of your eyes being open. You could be sitting there, looking at your marriage, looking at your children, looking at your job, looking at life, and don't even see what God is showing you. You got to ask God to show you the connection. Lord, what am I seeing? Let the light come in my eye. The light, the eye, the, the light of truth that will come into your eyes, go all the way up into your brain for you to process what it is that God is trying to show you. And so this right here is very intriguing as well. In Acts 16, 
it says on the Sabbath, we, were, we went outside the city gate to the river. And it says where we expected to find a place of prayer. We pray is good. And we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. So the women are there. We're going to have prayer. And one of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira. Her name was Lydia, a dealer in purple. So they're sitting there and, and Paul and them are, are, are delivering the word of God to them, right? And praying and such. And it says she was a worshiper of God. This is very important for you believers right now, for all of us. She was a worshiper of God. And she's sitting there listening to Paul. And it's like, <laughs> the lights are turned on, but there's nobody home. She didn't fully understand what Paul was saying. And, and so it says, the Bible says, the Lord opened her heart. You know, heart and mind is the same thing in Hebrew. The Lord opened her heart so that she was able to accept Paul's message. Otherwise, she was sitting there just looking. I love God. I'm a worshiper. I'm here. I'm in service. But there was, there was no interpretation going on, no critical thinking. She didn't get the message. And so God had to open up her heart, her mind for, uh, for her to get the revelation. You see that? How you can be in church? You can be in God and still don't have a clue. And so you have to ask God to open up your eyes so that you can be able to interpret the situations that you're going through properly. You gotta be able to hear what God is saying, see what he's showing you. And then that's not it. You gotta go to him now and say, Lord, okay, what, is it, what does this all mean? What's the next thing? Because God is always giving you sentences to put together, to get a sentence, to get paragraphs, right? To get a whole interpretation of story. And this takes time. Sometimes we're a little slow, <laughs> right? Sometimes we're all over the place. There's some days where you're in your flesh and you, you just can't function. You're not, you're just off. It takes time, right? And so you got to fight. You got to pray. You got to fast. You got to stay in the word, study the scripture so that you can get clarity. Otherwise, you're going to spend the rest of your life flying into the windows, being deceived, thinking that you know something when you don't, crashing I'm telling you, the bird hit that window so, so hard, it passed out limp. And so if you keep on going the way you're going, talk about those, those who you, you don't understand you, and you're not taking the time to sit down to really understand what God is showing you, what's going to happen is on repeat, the enemy is going to have you crash over and over in a glass window, okay? And you're going to continue to pass out and it's going to take out your strength. And so today you got to stop that cycle. And, 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 and that's what happens with a lot of people. And then you move on to the next thing. And because you didn't deal with the root, the root, which is lack of wisdom, lack of knowledge, lack, lack of truth, lack of clarity, you're going to go on to the next thing. And you're going to think you're flying, 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 them. boom, you're going to crash over and over into a, uh, into a glass window. But guess what? You can stop that cycle today. You saw how simple it was, right? Elisha prayed for his servant. Eyes open. And in this way, God can begin to change your story, take you out of that pattern of confusion, okay? Break that off of you and give you clarity, all right? So that was Lydia. All right, so let's go to blind Bartimaeus. Y'all ready? Y'all see, y'all not, not the only one who's dealing with blindness and confusion and stuff. There were others, but they got delivered and we can get delivered too. So blind Bartimaeus, let's find out about him. What could we learn from blind Bartimaeus? So in Mark 10, 46 to 52, there was a man called Bartimaeus, okay? So it says, then they came to Jericho and as Jesus and his, his disciples, um, together with a large crowd, they were leaving the city, All right? So the big crowd, Jesus and his, his disciples are there. And it says, but there was also a blind man, Bartimaeus, okay? And it says, he was sitting by the roadside and he was begging. That's what spiritual blindness does. It leaves you in a place where you're not walking in your new identity. When you're, when you're blind spiritually, you don't understand that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You don't understand who you really are. And so it leaves you in a place like a vagabond place. It leaves you in a place of begging just beneath who you are. Okay. So here come Bartimaeus. He's sitting by the roadside begging. But I like Bartimaeus. Because he knew that there was a better way. 
because he heard about Jesus, right? So when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth that was passing by with the crowd and everything, he began to shout. And that's what we're going to do this morning. He began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And we can do that today. You're tired of flying in the, in, in the window. You need understanding concerning your situation. We all have different situations. There is Jesus. You know that Messiah is real. And now you're, you can cry out. So all of us, we're crying out to Jesus. Jesus, David, son of David, have mercy. Otherwise, help me. I want to see. Help me. I'm tired, Lord. Help me. I need understanding. I'm tired of going around in a circle, Lord. I'm at a point now, Lord. Okay, this is the last time I'm going to crash in a window. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is the place where everything changes, where God is getting ready to give you a whole paradigm shift because you got to recognize that you don't know. You got to come to a place, right? Where, Lord, I don't know what's going on with my children. Lord, I, I don't even know what's going on with me. Lord, I don't even know what's going on with my, sp- Lord, I don't, I don't understand, Lord, what is going on with my job, what's going on with my body, the doctors don't know, Lord, what's going on, that's the place where it all turns for you, when you come to that place of humility, like that bird on the ground outside, just in back in December of 2019, where you get tired, you got to come to a place where you're tired of doing things your own way or tired of being confused. You're trying, but something is not clicking. Like, Lord, what is it that's causing this blockage? What is it, Lord? Show me, help me. And so it says, many rebuked Bartimaeus. So Bartimaeus is trying to get his deliverance. And the Bible said, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. They're like, shut up. Basically, right? Shut your mouth. They are rebuking this man for crying out for help. So you better get ready. Just like with David, David trying to do a good thing. And David's brother was attacking him. Not everybody wants you to see, because some people like for you to be ignorant because they're benefiting off of your ignorance. Okay. So not everybody's going to be happy for you. They told, they rebuked him as if he was doing something bad. Be quiet. But the Bible says he shouted all the more. Talk about persistency. Talk about being steadfast. He shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Right? He's trying to get his breakthrough. He's like, I'm not going to let anything stop me this time. He's pushing in like the woman who used to have an issue of blood. He's pushing in like the persistent widow. And we can learn from Bartimaeus. Even though they told him to shut his mouth and rebuke him, he's like, no, I need a breakthrough today. I am tired of slamming into glass windows. I need a revelation. Lord, what is it? What is the spirit that's behind this thing? What is it, Lord? Show me, oh God. Give me the prophetic dream. Give me the vision. Send me, oh God, a divine destiny helper to show me what I'm not seeing. And so they were rebuking him and he was shouting all the more. Like, no, I'm not going to miss this moment. I will not miss this moment. And the Bible said, Jesus stopped. Remember, Jesus was passing by with 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 the crowd. And it says he stopped. Jesus was so impressed with this man's, like, steadfastness and persistency. That he stopped and he said, call him, call him over here. And so they call the blind man and they said, cheer up the same people <laughs> rebuking this man. Whew, that's why you can't mess with people. Same ones who would tell him to shut up. He said, oh, cheer up on your feet, on your feet. It's a big moment on your feet. You're sitting there begging on the side of the road, dusty. On your feet, cheer up. He's calling you. Those who are listening to me right now, God is like enough with you being laid out blind. It's time to get up on your feet. God is calling you, calling your name. He's getting ready to show you great and mighty things that you have never seen before. Jeremiah 33 and verse three, call on me and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. And so it says that they told him to get up, and, and, and he threw off his cloak 
So he's on the road, right? So he's like this, begging. You know, they have their little cloak. And he's on the road and Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And he's blind. Let's, let's, get, let's, get the, let's get the blind thing on. Let's get blindfold. And he can't see. This is us right here, spiritually, right? Sometimes you can't see. And, but he's on there. He's like, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. <sighs> and they're like, they're like, get up, get up. He's calling you. And so the Bible said he threw off his cloak and he stood up and he's ready. And then Jesus is going to ask him. Jesus is like, what is it you want? What is it? And he's like, I want to see. Because I'm walking around and my eyes are covered. I need to see. And those of you listening to me right now, the same thing with you. You are, Your eyes are wide open, but you haven't been able to see. It's like this, the scale is on your eyes. But God said, call on me and I will answer you. And I'm getting ready to show you what's really going on. I'm getting ready to show you what my word really means. I'm getting ready to show you where I'm taking you. I'm getting ready to show you who you really are and what you've been called to do. I'm getting ready to show you who your children really are and what they have predestined to do. I'm getting ready to show you who your spouse is. No more crashing into the windows. God's getting ready to give you sight like never before. And so they said, get on your feet. And blind Bartimaeus is up from the ashes because God is going to give you beauty, beautiful crown for your ashes, beautiful crown of revelation and truth so that you're no longer stuck in Lodabar bar because he's moving you up to the palace. And so on your feet, they said, and he jumped up to his feet and he said, what do you want me to do for you, Tisha? <laughs> Tiffany, the Lord is asking, what do you want me to do for you? And that's that moment where you're going to have sincerity. You're going to just be honest with the Lord and tell the truth. He's asking you this morning, what is it you want me to do for you? Because I've called you by name and, and I died a whole debt for you, rose again for you to have clarity. What is it, Alicia, you need me to do for you? And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. And how many of us, you're ready to see what you have not been seeing. And so you've been going around in a circle, living beneath who you are in the ashes and the enemy is in the, in, is in the background because that's another aspect, spiritual warfare, just attacking you. And you've been going around crashing into the windows and not making progress. But God is getting ready to open up your eyes like never before so that you can see. He didn't ask for money. He said, Rabbi, I just want to see what's going on. Show me, show me the way. Help me to understand. Give me the knowledge, but not just the knowledge. Give me the wisdom. Show me what to do, the right thing to do that will make my tomorrow and my future better. And so the Bible said, Jesus said, go, no longer being bound. You can go, blind Bartimaeus, go. Your faith has healed you. And so I know that you were slammed against the window and, and, and some people would have given up by now because you fell apart so many times and some people would just like check out like Hagar was getting ready to check out, but you kept on being persistent. You kept on crying out to me and because you have done that, I'm setting you free. Go. I'm impressed with your faith. Your faith, victorious ones, those who are watching, the enemy want to take your faith because if he gets your faith, you can never please God. You can never please God without faith. Get your faith back. Maybe you believed over and over and it just, you kept on smacking into the windows and now you're overwhelmed and you're frustrated. Pick up your faith. Take your faith back and keep on going. Because when God sees your faith, he said, I'm gonna re reward you. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord because they that come to God must first believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so God said, go, it's time to go. Your faith has healed you. Just by you even watching this right now, <laughs> this is a Kairos moment. 
This is your Kairos moment. Two birds this morning. Boom, boom. But the next time you hit that window, <laughs> it's not going to be the same. You're going to get a breakthrough because now you know. Now you know. And that's what curses are. Smacking into glass windows, making no progress. It looked like it's the thing. It looks, oh, it looks like it. You're going to know to go over, to go around, okay? Or to use the hammer, the fiery hammer of the word of God and beat that window down, get your breakthrough. But you're not going to be crashing in the windows anymore. Enough. You're like blind Bartimaeus. You're, you're going now. You're, you've been released. You've been set free because of your faith. And then the Bible says immediately, right? So he came to Jesus. He was like this, y'all. And everybody tell him, be quiet. He couldn't see. He didn't see anything. But guess what? He had ears and he heard. He heard foot. You know, when people are blind, they said that they, other, other senses were heightened. And so even though you've been going through it, you didn't give up, right? You knew that Jesus was there. Even though you didn't understand some things. But now the scales are gone from your eyes. So the light can come in your cornea, your retina, your pupil, go in your brain so that you can see for the first time where the upside down images, now you can see, see them standing up, you know, the right way up, right side up. And you're like, whoa, revelation, like, oh, and you're going to break through. You're going to go higher and higher and deeper and deeper. Your life is never going to be the same again in the name of Jesus. Okay. And so immediately you receive this sight. And guess what? He followed Jesus. <laughs> like everybody else. Look like everybody else had their breakthrough was going along. And you know, blind Bartimaeus was on, wasn't in the ashes anymore. He's with everybody following Jesus because you're not going to be left behind. You're going forth like everybody else. Amen. And so that's blind, blind Bartimaeus' story. The last one, Daniel. And you can read this on your, your own. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But Daniel was confused about some things. So what, da what did Daniel do? Daniel said, I'm going to pray and fast. For those of you who are like, how do, I, how do I do it? How do I get that breakthrough? I'm glad you asked. Daniel, he said, I'm going to fast for three weeks. I believe it was three weeks. Because he wanted to understand what was going on. And this is what the angel said to him in verse 12. Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. And so you see, when you want to get clarity, you got to pray and fast, pray the word and fast so that you can get the understanding. You got to humble yourself through praying and fasting, and then God is going to send you the answer. Amen. Amen. And so the, the Bible says in verse 14, the angel says, now I have come, even though, so Daniel prayed for 21 days, there was warfare going on. So you got to be patient, y'all be patient because there's warfare. When the enemy sees that you're trying to get your fasting life together and you're, you're seeking God first, right? And, and you're trying to get that understanding, there's going to be opposition. So the, the angel said from the first day that you prayed, I was coming. But there was warfare. The enemy resisted me for 21 days and Daniel was fasting 21 days. And Michael, the angel had to ask Michael to come and help him. So I'm always like, wow, if the angel got a call for backup, you better make sure you got your backup team too. Make sure you have your tribe of people that's praying for you, the right people that God has sent to pray for you. Because even the angel had to get backup. So you can't do this by yourself. You have to have the right church. You have to have the right leadership, okay? And so the, the angel said, Michael came and helped me, right? And now I have come. I got my breakthrough. Look at that. The angel need a breakthrough so that you can get your breakthrough. It is so deep, okay? Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Daniel was confused. He fasted and prayed. Warfare broke up where his angel broke out where the angel was like held up with the answer. But Daniel didn't give up. And God finally gave him the breakthrough. And now the angel is there with him to give him more clarity. Patience persistency. This realm is not it. There's a whole spiritual part. Okay. And you got to stand still, keep on praying and fasting for God to show you what's really going on. You can't be in a hurry. Imagine if Daniel was like, it's taking too long. 
let me just go do it my own my own self. You're gonna crash into that window. Don't do it. Wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay. So how do you gain insight? Let's review. You must be filled up with the Holy Spirit. You want to stop crashing into the windows? You need to over, be overflown with the Holy Ghost. He's given to you when you get saved. He's a, he's a spirit of truth, right? He's a, he comforts us. He's our advocate. He prays the mind of the Father, the heart of the Father. He prays for us. He's our intercessor. Like, uh, we got our own prayer warrior team, the Holy Spirit and Jesus, Romans 8. Don't look at things that are worthless. Stop looking at the wrong things. It's going to blind you. Okay, so you, you want to gain insight? Only look upon the things that are of God. Okay, that's Psalm 101, Psalm 101 verse 3. Make sure your cup, your temple is overflown with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18, be filled with the Spirit. You are the temple of the living God, right? First Corinthians 6, 19. Ask. Ephesians 1, 16 to 19, ask God for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, spirit of revelation, and he'll, he'll going to give it to you. And he's going to show you some things and he's going to have to hold you up because some things is heavy, right? So you're going to need the angel to hold you up, the Holy Spirit to hold you up. He's going to be like, <gasps> right? But he's going to give it to you. He's going to show you what's in your bloodline, who opened up what door in the bloodline. And I need for you to shut this door of depression because there's somebody in the family who kept, who kept on trying to commit suicide and opened the door up for the strong men of death and destruction. I need for you to shut that. I need for you to fast for 40 days. God's going to show you what it is and what to do in response, okay? So that means you got to pay attention. You got to get in God's presence. You got to be fasting and praying on repeat, okay? So what else? So you have to have faith sight. The real sight is faith sight faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so it's spiritual right you gotta ask if, if, if you're seeing the tree like i said before it's a physical thing but what is god trying to show you about that tree god want to take into the spiritual so you can see the revelation okay so faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so you can't be walking around with your natural eyes only you need spiritual revelation like oh when god shows you that tree that's how your children are going to be they're going to be like trees by the water you know by the riverbanks i'm going to make your daughter she's going to grow into a, a into a, a palm tree or whatever the tree is right and then god going to say i want you to research the tree that you're looking at oh this is a sequoia tree oh okay i know the sequoia that it takes fire for their seed to open up and, and to and to get more trees and so god is trying to show you that they're going to be massive warfare you see what I'm saying? So it's not just a sequoia. God is giving you a revelation, but you can't get that revelation just looking at the sequoia tree. You got to go in its presence and find out what is it you're trying to show me, Lord? And he will show it to you because we're spiritual being. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't come to God. Oh, it's a sequoia. I can touch the sequoia. No, what is God saying about the sequoia tree? And then now you got to slow down. Get your notebook out. Pray attention. Okay, Sequoia. And as you begin to research that, God's going to open up your understanding. Ask me how I know. Okay? All right. What else? So talk about faith. The same thing with John 3, 8. Remember Nicodemus? Nicodemus was supposed to be a teacher of the law, but he was blind. Remember? And Jesus said to him, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it. You hear it sound, Right? but you can't tell where it's coming from. You can't see the wind, but it's there. That's the life of faith. So gone are the, day, the days where you over there crashing into the, the window because you're just looking at things at face value. No, shadow box and all that stuff. No, God is giving you clarity, okay? Showing you things in the spiritual realm. Showing you what's getting ready to take place tomorrow so that when it happens, you're like, oh, God showed me. I bind you, cast you out, giving you advance notice god is amazing so that you're not going around in a circle anymore it's taking you higher that's what john in book of john the book of revelation they told john to come up higher come up higher so i can show you you got to climb that mountain like moses go up higher so you can get that clarity you can't stay in the valley you got to come up higher so that god can show you because if you don't get the clarity you're gonna keep on going through that problem keep on losing your job every six months you're gonna keep you know what I'm saying? It's an evil cycle that has to be broken. And how is it broken? God said, my people escape through knowledge and you will know the truth 
and it will set you free. You get it? All right. Last thing the Holy Spirit showed me in 2 Kings 3.17, there, there was no rain, right? So this is all about spiritual, not, not your natural eyes, spiritual. The prophet said to them, so this is what the Lord says. You will see neither wind nor rain. You ain't going to see it. So don't look for it. Where's the rain? Where is the wind? Where? You're not going to see it. I perceive it in the spirit. Okay, because that's the real, the real sight in the real realm. You ain't going to see no rain. So stop looking for it. But I don't see my husband changing. I don't see my children changing. You keep on responding that way, you're going to keep on smacking into that window. You got to see what God said. See, see the way that God's showing you based on the word, based on the revelation he's given to you in your dreams as you're reading the word of God, getting the, the rhema word. So you see your husband acting crazy. And you're going to have to be able to look at that husband acting crazy and see God turning that situation around because of your faith. You're able to speak those things that be not as though they were. That's what I had to do when my husband had a whole stroke. I had to look at him with his face twisted up, drooling and everything. Can't, can't, can't read, can't write. And I had to see past all of that that was in front of me and speak the word of God. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Okay? You're going to bounce back. God's going to change this around. And I began to wave my flags. Spiritual warfare. Waving my flag. Bloodstained banner of Jesus. Yahweh Nisi. I, I was fasting and praying. And God did it. God healed Douglas Stacy. And everybody on here is witness of that. You don't go by what you see with your physical eyes. You go, you go by what you see with your spiritual eyes, the eyes of Jesus. You're not going to see the rain with your natural eyes. You're not going to see all that, right? It says you will neither see wind nor rain, Tisha. Yet this valley will be filled with water. Say what? The woman who used to have an issue of blood didn't have a doctor right there when she got healed, correct? The Bible says she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus and power was released and she was healed. You was looking for a doctor? Mm -mm. the doctor was Jesus and to get that healing it took faith spiritual and she tapped into that and got her breakthrough how about we learn from these people in the bible so we can get our breakthrough too and not be crashing into windows and so it says you will neither see wind nor rain yet this valley will be filled with water and you and your cattle and your animals the other animals will drink say what I'm gonna drink and see valleys of water but there's no rain spiritual and we are different. We're not of this world. And that's how we live in a different dimension, right? We walk in spirit and we don't gratify the lust of our flesh. And so even though you might be living in a cardboard box outside, you begin to speak, I'm royalty. I'm a royal priest of the holy nation. And God's going to turn this around for my good. And God is going to do it because God said, I hasten my word to perform my word. My word will not return back unto me void. That's why you got to get the word of God in you and speak the word, death and life from the power of your tongue and begin to speak those things that be not as though they were like Abraham did. And that's how you're going to get your breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what the word of the Lord is for today. Faith sight must be developed daily. This is a daily thing so that you don't look at this a tree, but you're going to say, what am I supposed to learn from this tree? Amen. Tiffany Flowers, you can come on and tell us what, 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 what is the Holy Spirit showing you? And then Tisha, you can go ahead and close us out. Tiffany, are you on here? What is the Holy Spirit showing you this morning? What, what are you walking away with this morning? I, I am on this morning. Um, and the Holy Spirit is showing me um, to have faith in his word, to have faith in what he has shown me before. Um, and other circumstances mm. and that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm. So if he's delivered me from other things and he can deliver me for whatever I, I ask him for, if it's in his will. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Tish, thank you. Thank you, um, Tiffany, for that. Mm -hmm. And Keisha, whenever you're ready, you can come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Stacy, can you put it up on the screen for me, please? 
Okay. Yes, Lord. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for today. We thank you so much for everyone who is in, in attendance this morning, Lord God. Um, just the mere fact that they were in attendance, Father God, is an act of faith. And so we thank you for that, Lord, that you're giving us the faith, that you are um, leading us to you, Lord God, that you're allowing us to make time to get closer to you. Father God, we just ask this morning in the name of Jesus, if you would just show us how to gain the wisdom, show us how to gain the understanding, Lord God. And we, we thank you for the word, for you're a God who says, what can I do? for you. And so, Father God, I pray that throughout this week, Lord, that we will sit and we will usher up our prayers, Lord God, and say, Father, can you please do this for me? And it is no thing for us to ask of you because you already sent your son to die for our sins, Lord God. We pray that our loved ones would have their eyes open, Lord God, but you gave us some keys today, Father. You said that we have to get on our feet. We have to get in the battle position. We have to get ready. We have to get ready to stand. And so, Father God, I pray this week that we would stand on your word, Lord, that we would stand on the revelations and the meditations that you have given to us, Father. For everyone who is in the sound of my voice, Father God, I pray that this word would resonate with them and be a seed that just continues to grow in them all week, Lord God, that we serve a God who asks us, what can I do for you? You're just waiting for us to humble ourselves and ask you. And so we thank you for the opportunity to come directly to you, Lord God, and even tell you what, um, what we need and what we want, Lord but you want us to make the first step. And that's why you always ask us to participate in our faith. And so we thank you, Father God. Now, if you're on this call this morning and you are a Christian, you're already saved, and maybe your faith is waning, um, I want you to be encouraged because you, you came this morning. And so that's an act of faith, no matter what the enemy tries to tell you or come against you. Maybe you want to increase your faith. Maybe you definitely want to um, walk in the will of God, but maybe there's a lot of confusion. If that's you, all you have to do is repeat after me to get back into the will of the Lord. Say, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I know I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe Jesus Christ, your son, died for my sins. And right now, I turn, I turn from my sins and return to you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes. If you're on this call this morning and you have never received the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, but you keep hearing the call, you keep feeling his presence, he is calling you this morning. And maybe you've been I'm searching for God in so many different other places and people and ways, but there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus. And if that's you this morning, you can just repeat after me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that you, Father God, raised him from the dead, so now I am saved. Thank you for saving me, Father God, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you said this prayer, you are saved in Jesus' name. We encourage you to begin to get into your word. We encourage you to find a Bible-based church. And the doors of our church is open. Jeremiah 29, 11. You are welcome here. Um, if you're looking for a church home, all you have to do is email us at jeremiah2911church at gmail.com and someone will respond to you. Um, and now for the benediction. Number six, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you 
peace. And of course, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. 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 Ooh, I know the plans I have for you. Powerful. Mm. Amen. Amen. We bless everyone and we will meet again in the morning <laughs> by the cave. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, listen, y'all, I feel so fired up. <laughs> that was a beautiful word. That was incredible. Indeed. That was God, right? I, I love Amen. That. What can I do for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not for everybody else, but for you. Ooh, yeah. what can I do for you. That was mm -hmm. very powerful. Oh, thank you, Lord. And he's going to do it. And then he's going to do it. Oh, my goodness. God is so powerful. Mm -hmm. All right, Victoria's Welcome. You know, we can go on and on. <laughs> yes. Angela's yeah. like, don't get me started, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have Bye. a great day.